Hello, and welcome to this video on fundus photography interpretation. The objectives of this video are to review the normal anatomy of the fundus and to identify some key acute and chronic retinal diseases. First, we're going to start off with the normal anatomy of the retina. On this slide, we have a fundus photo of a normal retina. When describing the fundus, there are four areas you want to examine closely, the disc, the vessels, the macula, and the periphery. Let's start with the optic disc. The optic disc is located nasally. Thus, by looking at the image provided, we can establish that we are looking at the patient's right eye. When looking at the disc, we should assess its color, contour, and sharpness. The disc should be pale pink, approximately 1.5 millimeters in diameter, with sharp and flat margins. Within the disc, there should be a physiological cup. Although quite variable, the cup is typically less than 6 tenths the diameter of the disc. This comparison in size is referred to as the cup to disc ratio. This ratio can be measured by dividing the vertical height of the cup over the vertical height of the disc. In this case, our cup to disc ratio is approximately 0.4. Our next area of interest are the vessels of the retina. The central retinal artery and central retinal vein emerge from the optic disc and branch into four arcades, the supranasal, the suprotemporal, the infranasal, and the infratemporal vessels. Arteries and veins within these arcades can be identified via their respective morphologies. Veins are often dark red, wider, and have an inconspicuous or absent light reflex. Arteries are often bright red, narrower, and have a visible light reflex. The margins of the temporal vessels define our next area of interest, the macula. The macula is responsible for central, high-resolution color vision. Located in the center of the macula is the fovea. The fovea is responsible for most of our visual acuity. Finally, we look at the periphery of the retina. The periphery is roughly broken down into four areas, superior region, an inferior region, a temporal region, and a nasal region. The fundus is usually red. However, there is some variation in color depending on the amount of individual pigmentation and the visibility of the choroidal vessels beneath the retina. Both images shown represent normal variants of the retina. The first pathology we're going to look at is optic disc edema. Optic disc edema is defined by a blurred disc margin. The image on the left represents a healthy optic nerve while the image on the right represents optic disc edema. Optic disc edema can be categorized by its laterality. A unilateral presentation usually indicates a pathologic process affecting the individual nerve in question. A bilateral presentation usually indicates an uncompensated increase in intracranial pressure. If optic disc edema is identified, the patient should be referred to an ophthalmologist immediately. The next acute pathology we are going to examine is a retinal detachment. Retinal detachments are sight-threatening conditions. Retinal detachments occur when a subretinal fluid accumulates between the neurosensory retina and the retinal pigment epithelium. There are typically three main ways this process occurs. A regmatogenous detachment, also known as a retinal tear, a tractional process, or an exudative process. The image on screen is a case of a regmatogenous retinal detachment. Of note, the detachment is lighter in color and crinkled upon itself like tissue paper. The next condition we will review is diabetic retinopathy. Diabetic retinopathy is the leading cause of vision loss worldwide among patients aged 25 to 74. Diabetic retinopathy is often classified into two categories, non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy and proliferative diabetic retinopathy. The distinguishing feature between these two categories is the presence of abnormal blood vessels as seen in the highlighted box. This process of neovascularization is characterized by a lacy network of blood vessels as indicated by the flickering white outline. The classic signs of nonproliferative diabetic retinopathy include cotton wool spots, microaneurysms, hard exudates, hemorrhages, and retinal swelling. The final condition we will review in this module is glaucoma. Glaucoma is the second leading cause of blindness worldwide. Glaucoma itself describes a group of progressive conditions in which there is a characteristic cupping of the optic disc due to retinal ganglion cell loss. Typically a case of glaucoma presents with an abnormal optic disc finding. Key findings to consider when examining a suspected glaucomatous eye include a high to cup to disc ratio. In this case, the optic disc on the right side of the screen is experiencing greater cupping when compared to the optic disc on the left. Another finding to consider is asymmetry between optic nerves. A difference of 0.2 or more between optic nerves raises a suspicion of possible glaucoma. 
the isn't rule is another objective manner of assessing abnormal cupping of the optic disc. The isn't rule represents the thickness of the optic nerve quadrants in decreasing order from inferior to superior to nasal to temporal. For example, the inferior aspect of the neural retinal rim should be the thickest. The thickness of the neural retinal rim should decrease progressively as we move through the letters of the isn't rule from inferior to superior to nasal to temporal. Any violation of the isn't rule should raise your suspicion of glaucomatous changes. That concludes this module on fundus photography interpretation.